Let me explain to you something I learned. Justice is when you get what you deserve. Mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. But grace different though. Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. And I'm all right with that. I might not have done nothing to get these balls. But it ain't up to you though. See, this is some more God giving me some more that I probably didn't deserve. But grace is above all else that you ever asked for or imagined. That's what grace is. My life full of grace. You better go get yourself some. I'm going to tell you something. You can't buy grace. It ain't for sale. If I could take all the money I have, and thank you, Jesus, I got some money. I would take all of it if I could and by grace with it. But you can't. It's free. So I'm not finna give this class in front of me a speech. I'm finna give you a lesson. I'm just finna give you one more before you get out of here. Let me say this to all y'all out here. Man, you did it. Yeah, you did it. You did it. You did the doggone thing. You did it in spite of the haters, in spite of the naysayers. You done set up in here and messed around and got yourself something that such a small percentage of people do. You done messed around and got yourself a college degree. When you leave here, young people, my message is really for everybody in this field. I want to challenge you something. What you've done up until now has been an amazing accomplishment. I take my hat off to you. What you've accomplished shouldn't be played short. And you have so far to this point become successful. But I'm challenging everybody in this graduating class. See, being successful is what everybody wants. Everybody I know want to be two things. They want to be happy and they want to be successful. But I'm going to challenge you today. I want you to go a little bit past successful. I want somebody in here to go up out of here and be great. There is a difference, you know. There is a difference between success and greatness. Success, you get your degree, that's successful. You get a job, that's successful. You raise a family, that's successful. So far, the success you have has been for yourself. You're successful. Congratulations. But you didn't get this piece of success by yourself. You see these people wrapped around this building? You think you're proud. Lord have mercy. There's some people up there got their chest stuck out so far. You have to understand the sacrifice that these people in here them put so you can be right there so you can be successful some of y'all first time graduates in your family first time ever going to college in your family some of y'all trying to continue a legacy of people around here that have been to college and want their kids to graduate too whatever the case though people up in here man sacrifice for you to get here so you could be successful you went to college to become successful but I'm going to ask you something though. I need 30 of y'all to go out of here and be great. I need just 30 to go be great. You know, there's a difference, you know. I want you to be great. I want you to go out of here and be great. You know the difference between great and success? Great people change other people's lives. Great people put other people in front of them. Great people go back to their community and change lives. Great people buy a big house up on the hill and then teach other people how to get up on the hill too. That's what great people do. Gandhi was great. Muhammad Ali was great. Martin Luther King was great. They was great. They made other people great. Muhammad Ali said, I said I was the greatest before I was the greatest. 
You got to claim greatness, man. Or you can just be successful. Go on and get your job. Go on and make your money. But man, you change somebody's life, you could be great. We need somebody from ASU to go up out of here and become great. Be a life changer. Change some boys' lives, some girls' lives. Show somebody how you got a college degree. A long time ago, I was with a friend of mine, and his grandmother was in the hospital dying, and he wanted me to take her, go see her. I was young, and she was dying. She had terminal illness. She knew she was dying. She asked her grandson to come see him, so I took him. We go in the hospital room, and you know, she was in bad shape, man. So I was standing behind him, he was at her bed. She said to him, she said, do you know your great-grandfather's name? My boy said, no, my dear, I, I don't know his name. She said, you know why you don't know his name? He said, why, mom, dear? She said, because he ain't leave you now. He, she said, when you walk away from my bed, you ain't going to see me no more. She said, go live your life so your children's grandchildren will know your name. Live a life where your children's grandchildren will know who you was, man. That they know your name. But they ain't gonna know your name if you wasn't great. They ain't gonna know your name if you don't leave them something. Lesson one is live your life so your children's grandchildren will know who you are. Go be great, y'all. Take this degree and make it more than just a piece of paper hanging on the wall. Take this degree and go change some lives with it. Make it up. Put pressure on yourself. Go out there and, and ask God to help make you great. Don't go be regular. I don't really care for regular. I never really wanted a regular life. I wanted an extraordinary life. I've been asking God for this my whole life. Now what he gave me is grace. Way more than I ever asked for. Second thing I want to teach you. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to learn this one now. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. Because this is what you're going to have to do. Because let me tell you something. As successful as you've been up to this point, once again, I congratulate you to the fullest. But let me tell you something. You bounce to get to fail. But you got to learn how to fail man, and win anyway. You got to overcome. So now here's the lesson. Behind every moment of adversity, every single moment of adversity in your life, two things are going to happen. There's going to be a lesson and there's going to be a blessing. You got to wait on both of them. If you let the adversity crumble you, if you focus on the adversity, you will lay there and wallow in the fact that you have failed. Because failure coming. But life is 10% what happened to you. It's 90% what you do about it. Man, so what you fail. It's not really failure, though. Every time you fail, it's a valuable, taught, learned experience that makes you greater for later on. You got to work through the adversity. When adversity hits y'all and it's coming, remember there's a lesson and a blessing. You got me? All right, next thing I need for y'all to know. This is the third lesson. Quit asking God to make your life easy because he ain't going to do that. See, people, y'all go to church, man. Y'all got all these scriptures y'all memorize. Don't apply none of them to your life. God ain't finna make your life easy. Lord Jesus, Lord, I don't want this on me. Sorry. Lord, take away all my worries. That's you worried. Lord, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do this. Lord, I'm so tired. Lord, help. What y'all doing? Quit asking God for that. 
you got to have some faith. See, listen to me. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. You got to have faith, man. If you going to graduate and whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, you got to put some faith on it. You, you can get through with all this help. This, 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 you're going to get your degree, and man, I can't tell you how big this is. But it's going to be a piece of sheepskin that's going to hang on your wall. You've got to go do something. you got to get some faith in your life. Lord Jesus, I want my life to be easy. It ain't finna be easy. You're going to lose some loved ones along the way. You're going to not get the job you want. Somebody on your job one day going to come in there and hand you a slip of paper and tell you they don't even want you here no more. One of your companies is going to up and relocate, and you ain't going to have the money or the resources to go with the company. You're going to go outside the club one day, your car going to be gone. You know, people steal, people steal, people steal. I didn't say repoed, I said stole. Your car going to be gone. You're going to drive up one day, your house going to be on fire. Lord, Lord, Lord. Now, your house fully ablaze. What is you asking God? to take the fire off your house for. Your house is already on fire. Lord Jesus, had him drive my car back up here. Thieves don't return cars. <laughs> Faith don't make it easy, man. Faith make it possible. The last thing I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna let y'all go, because man, I want y'all to come across here and get this paper. Your greatness is in your imagination. Listen to this. Your greatness is in your imagination. Don't get this degree and forget about your imagination. I'm going to teach you something now. If you don't get nothing else I say, I need everybody's attention in here because this is for everybody. At my mama's church, there was a scripture that they used to read. And every time they read it, the church went crazy. And the scripture was about faith. The scripture said, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I didn't get that Bible verse until one day I was reading a book. And in this book, there was a quote by Albert Einstein. And he paraphrased that scripture. You know what I'm saying? He took it and put it in regular English where a dude like me could get it. You know what Albert Einstein said? Look at here now. He said, that lady said, what did he say? That's why I like working in front of y'all. He said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. You gotta get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. Man, do you know what that means? This was good news for me. I needed to hear this, because you know what that meant? That meant everything you've ever imagined is real. But uh-oh, it's not only real. It was God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. Oh, man. Trip me out now. Trip me out. Man, I almost start crying. Do you know how bad I needed that information? See, you've been thinking that your imagination is hopeless hope. That it's just some, some thoughts, them random thoughts. But let me trip you out though. Have you, ever, have you ever tripped on this before? Do you know that it is impossible for you to think an impossible thought? That is impossible. You ain't that smart. So how did that imagination get in your head? You want me to tell you? It was God. God put it there. He put it there to show you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. This whole time you've been imagining stuff. It was God been showing you something he got for you. Your problem is though, you tell your imagination to the wrong people. See, you go up and you tell it to your friends and your so-called loved ones. And because you think they care about you, you know how many of y'all that had a really wonderful idea? 
some God showed you a business, a transfer, an opportunity, more, more education, more training, and man, this can change your world. You know how many of y'all have had this wonderful idea and you went in there and took it to that so-called friend and loved one and they shot it down and because you thought they loved you, you thought they had your best interest at heart, so you believed them. Man, they was wrong. They was wrong. If God had wanted it in their head, he'd have put it in their head. He put your imagination in your head. Don't let this degree mess up your imagination. Your greatness is in your imagination.